Have you ever felt lost in your faith journey? Feeling lost or uncertain in our faith journey is a very common experience. But it's important to recognize that doubt and questioning, they're natural parts of our spiritual growth. So we're going to talk about what it means to be in a spiritual funk and how we are to get out of it. There are some things that we can do when we feel like we are, we are in a spiritual funk that will help us get over or get out of this valley. So one thing we can do is self-reflection, all right? We have to take time to reflect on our beliefs, to reflect on our experiences, and to reflect on any doubts that we have. You know, we must consider what aspects of our faith actually resonate with us and what feelings, what aspects of our faith really challenge us. And we also must seek guidance. Listen, we have to reach out to trusted spiritual mentors. We have to reach out to our pastors. And sometimes we even need to reach out to biblical counselors because talking to someone who understands your faith tradition, your traditions, your faith beliefs can provide valuable insights and support. I know for myself personally, I have reached out to my pastors before. I have reached out to a spiritual counselor and she helped me understand some of the challenges and difficulties that I was going through. And it really helped me to get over the hump or get out of the valley that I was currently in. So I highly recommend that if you are feeling spiritually lost or spiritually frustrated right now. Another thing we can do is explore the Bible. We can read spiritual texts. We can explore different perspectives and engage in conversations with others. I mean, sometimes exploring other viewpoints can help clarify our own beliefs. All right, next we can practice mindfulness. And by that, I mean engaging in practices like meditating on God's word or prayer because these can help us connect with our deepest inner self and it can help us to find clarity. Listen, when we are distracted, when we are full up to the brim with just information, sometimes it's hard to be mindful. It's hard to practice mindfulness because we're so distracted. So I just want to encourage you to to find some time to be by yourself, to practice mindfulness, to, to practice meditating on God's word and to just prayer. Simply talk to God about things that you're struggling with or things that are challenging you so that you can just create some space in your mind to focus and to really think and to really communicate with the Lord. The next thing I want to talk to you about is community. It is so important to connect with a supportive community because being part of a faith community, it can really provide the encouragement and the sense of belonging that we can sometimes lack as a believer. Sometimes we are surrounded by so many unbelievers that we can just feel alone and I know that I have experienced that before and that's not a very pleasant place to be when you are a Christian and you're on fire for the Lord and that's what you want to talk about is Jesus Christ and everything that he's doing in your life everything that you're experiencing everything that you're learning and when you don't have people like-minded people in your circle to communicate these things with, you can feel very lonely. So I would just recommend that you are surrounded, that you find people who are supportive that can help you on this faith journey. You know, we have to remember that doubt doesn't necessarily weaken our faith. You know, it can deepen it 
by leading us to a more authentic understanding. By the way, my name's Michelle, and I just want to thank you for being here. And if this is the first time that you have been here, what you will find here is faith-based content that encourages you to grow and deepen your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you come here all the time, I just want to thank you for allowing me to speak biblical truth into your life. Today, we're talking about the importance of spiritual growth. So let's get back at it. Spiritual growth is important because it allows us to develop an inner connection to our deepest selves and to gain insight into our true nature. Listen, we're made up of the mind, body, and soul. And when we connect with our deepest self, we are connecting to our soul. And our soul takes time to transform, okay? When you were born, if you were not born into a Christian home, then you were exposed to a lot of worldly things. And so your soul was used to doing worldly things, thinking worldly thoughts, taking worldly action. But once you became a believer in Jesus Christ, your soul became defiant. Like you have to train your soul to do godly things, to think godly thoughts, to take godly action. And that is a process. So when we are able to develop that strong inner connection with our deepest selves, we are gaining insight to our truest nature, which is how we were created. Our soul, our spirit is going to live on forever. So yes, we have a long time to develop it, but it's important to do that now while we're here and while we are on this faith journey with the Lord. Listen, spiritual growth, it helps us to understand ourselves so that we can better control our thoughts, actions, and words because then we can play a little part in controlling our happiness and peace because we know that true happiness and inner peace only comes from a relationship, an intimate and deep relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing in this world can give you the happiness and the peace that only Jesus Christ can give you. So spiritual growth, that is a key part to any Christian life, all right? As it helps all of us to grow more and more into the likeness of our creator God. It helps us to transform into the holiness that God created us for. Listen, we were created in the likeness of God himself. And as we grow and transform on this spiritual, this faith journey, we become more and more like Christ and we reflect Christ more and more to this world. And that is a good, good thing because that brings God glory. Listen, maintaining a consistent spiritual practice and growing in faith can indeed be challenging, right? I know that. I know that. There are common challenges that all of us face, every single one of us. Every single Christian, every single person who is a follower of Jesus Christ experiences these struggles. I'm telling you, I experience them, them myself many times. So one, the first thing that we can experience, the first struggle is time constraints. Listen, we have busy schedules. We have work. We have family. We have commitments. And it often makes it difficult to allocate our time for spiritual practices like prayer and meditation and reading the Bible. But God has equipped us with the Holy Spirit. So these, these struggles are real, but we can also live in victory and overcome them when we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit in us. 
I'm busy. I work full time. I have children. I have a family. I have commitments. I have a church that I'm committed to. I, I like to make these videos. I mean, nobody's making me make these videos and I'm not um, an influencer, so to speak. I don't get paid to do this. I enjoy doing it. I feel like the Lord has called me to encourage others with his word. So, I mean, that's a commitment that I put on myself. But it's something that I believe the Lord wants me to do. So we have to follow the Lord. And there's going to be struggles with the other things, the other people in our life that we are committed to. But we must, to the best of our ability, practice spiritual things every single day. Another thing we all face is distractions, all right? We know that life bombards us with distractions. I mean, we have social media, entertainment, and constant notifications that can really hinder our focus on spiritual matters. I mean, I have been there. I feel like sometimes I am so distracted by everything that I have not had one second to actually ponder or to even think about the Lord. And that's not what God has for us. That is not the best life that God has for us. So in my own life, I've had to cut back on my social media and my, um, my, uh, notifications and really what I do online, the amount of time that I spend online. Personally, I have um, downloaded like the Facebook pages and like YouTube studio and things like that so that I'm literally just uploading and putting my content out there and then just leaving it, just letting it go because I, I can't <laughs> put that much focus on trying to grow, so to speak. I mean, yes, I want these messages to impact a lot of people, but I don't have time to research keywords and hashtags and YouTube algorithm and Facebook algorithms and stuff like that. So I just really have to leave that stuff to God. That is not where my focus needs to be. So I don't put it there. Personal choice personal decision. And sometimes we can experience spiritual dryness and individuals experience periods of spiritual dryness or lack of inspiration. And it feels like our faith is stagnant. And that's another area that I have personally struggled with. And I just always wonder like, Lord, why Am I back at the same place of feeling spiritually empty when I spend so much time with you? But the Lord really spoke to my heart and he said, it's quality time. Like, yes, you spend a lot of time with me, but how much quality time do you spend with me? How much time do you really spend reading and meditating and digesting my word and praying and allowing me to answer you without just moving on to the next thing like I can be distracted in lack focus so I just want to encourage you if you feel like you are in a spiritually dry place right now then maybe it's because you are not spending enough quality time with the Lord another reason um we can feel like our spiritual growth is hindered is because we lack community, right? An isolated Christian is a weak Christian because isolation can lead to a decline in spiritual motivation. You know, being a part of a supportive community can help sustain our faith. Listen, when we have no accountability, when nobody in our circle cares if we're doing anything for the Lord, if no one in our circle cares that we are being obedient to God, then, hey, sometimes we're we're not going to be obedient to the Lord. And if nobody calls us out for it, then 
you know, we can just keep on living that way or we have to, you know, be motivated within ourselves to say, okay, enough is enough. I'm not obeying the Lord and I know it. I have got to get around uh, a spiritual, spiritually healthy community. Another thing can be just balancing material in spiritual needs. Listen, striking a balance between material needs, you know, like work and finances with spiritual needs can be challenging. Because listen, we live in this world and this world requires money to live. It does. I mean, unless, well, never mind. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. I don't know how people live if they don't have money, okay? So I'm just going to talk about the challenges, like when we have to pay for a house, we have to pay electricity, we have to pay for garbage removal, snow removal, we have to pay for food and our, our phones, you know, internet service. Like there's a lot of things that we have to pay for. So we have to be mindful of that. So we don't put too much focus on our material needs and not enough focus on our spiritual needs. And the last thing I want to talk to you about for this section anyway is guilt and shame. Our past mistakes and, or uh, perceived inadequacies can lead to guilt and shame affecting our spiritual journey. Listen, if we feel so guilt-ridden and shameful that we cannot even go to the Lord in prayer, like we are just so dirty and so unclean that why would the Lord even want to talk to us? Why would he even want us to be in his presence? But listen to me, when we are believers in Jesus Christ, when we are saved, we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. His righteousness covers us. So when God looks at us, he sees his son. So we are completely righteous in God's sight. So I do not want you to carry around shame and guilt from your past. If you have sinned, repent, get right with the Lord and get back into a right relationship with him. Believe that he has forgiven you and just move on and continue to walk with the Lord and he will continue to guide and direct you. Listen, we have to remember that these struggles, they are normal, okay? And everyone faces them at some point. At some point in their Christian journey, they will face struggles that they think is going to overtake them. But listen, God is faithful. And we read in, I think it's in Second Peter, it says, even when we are faithless, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Amen. Amen for that. So we have to be strengthening our faith by being intentional about the spiritual practices and habits that we have on a daily basis. That is the only way we are going to deepen our Christian faith. Now, I would like you to share your own experiences with personal growth in the comments below. And just take a look around my channel and see if there's other videos that can help you on your faith journey. All right, I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you have given us everything we need. Lord, I just pray for each one of us that are listening to this video that you would just help us to know you deeply and intimately for ourselves. And Lord, help us to be intentional about our spiritual growth. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next Wednesday.